In this video, we're going to introduce a framework for how you can go about to design sustainable business models in practice. We call this framework RESTART, and it's an acronym of seven paths towards more sustainable business models. So the seven paths that we will discuss in this video are characteristics of business models that are already taking place, but we believe they will be even more important in the future. The first one is about redesigning the business models. We say that in the future, business owners and business managers, they need to redesign their business model more often. We already see this happening in many industries, that companies that have operated based on one fundamental business model for a very long time are suddenly forced to rethink this business model when they're facing competition from entirely new kinds of players in their industry or because someone comes along with a disruptive solution where they offer something different. So they need to find then and redesign their business model in a way that reduces the shadow side and that shed more light. So that's the, the first one in Restart R. And then it's the E, Jakob, experimentation. Yes. If you're going to change more often, you have to become better at changing. That is, you have to develop a mindset and an ability to experiment, to test new ideas, test new solutions, go to the market and see what are your consumers really after, what do consumers uh, want, and what kinds of changes are they willing to live with. It's dangerous to change your business model without really having tested whether or not uh, the market is uh, willing to go for your solution. So experimentation is key when you want to change your business model. So that was R and E. And I would, I would like to take the three next one together, Lars Jakob, with S, T and A. S is service logic, T is the circular economy, and A is alliances. And all of these three characteristics of business models, we see them as growing together in many business models today. And they are linked together. But let's start signing with service logic. What does this mean? That's a good question, Lars Jakob. Service logic, what is that? Well, let's think of it as something concrete, like the car that you have back home. But do all of us need to own our own car or can this be provided as a service? Mm. So this product logic, where we, whereby we think of the car as something, it is physical, but it's a physical object for our ownership, and start thinking about the car as a solution that offers us mobility. It's something that takes us from A to B. Well, then perhaps we don't have to own the car. Perhaps it's enough that whenever we need a car, the car is there. And if we never own the car, if we just have access to the car or to the drill or whatever kind of products that we need, um, then the ownership is at the producer's hand. And the producer then has incentives to make this last longer. And, and give us access to it and find new business models that enables them to create, deliver and capture value in, in profitable ways. So the service logic then can help us get more out of less. It can help us share assets across individuals, households, even companies. And in that way, Svainung, the service logic is actually an integral part of the next letter in our acronym, T, the circular economy. The circular economy is distinguished from what is the traditional linear economy. We're used to thinking of products as produced. We dig and we produce and we use and we dispose. It's a linear way of thinking, but we need to think circular. And in order to make this circular value chain happen, well, then we need to think of products as services. Exactly. So services are a part of the circular economy. Recycling is also part of the circular economy. All sorts of changes in business models that lead to a higher degree of reuse of resources so that we get a higher resource efficiency, that we generate less waste, is all part of the circular economy. And very often, Svainung, this happens in alliances, which is the next component in the framework. Alliance is, is an important part of the business model, the partners that you have. So when you look at the initial business model and you redesign it, uh, then you might need new partners, new alliances to be able to deliver your value to the customers in new ways. 
So alliances can allow companies to create, deliver and capture value in ways that they would not have been able to do on their own. So we, when we want to tackle the big sustainability challenges, it's likely that alliances of companies or even ecosystems of companies will be more efficient in doing that than any given company could do on its own. This leads us, uh, Lars Jakob, to the, to the two last uh, R and T. Yeah, those two components in the RESTART acronym are respectively results and three-dimensionality. And they fit together closely because they relate to how the company prioritizes the right kinds of results and organizes to deliver performance along three dimensions, financial, social and environmental. The seven letters together, a restart, is also a restart of a business model. Going from one way of creating, delivering and capturing value to a new one. And the seven paths that are captured in this framework will be relevant in different degrees for different companies and in different industries. Uh, in some companies, it will be more relevant to try to build a circular model. In other companies, alliances will be very important and so on and so on. But these different changes that the seven paths towards more sustainable business models indicate should have some relevance for any organization in any industry. In order to achieve a more sustainable future, we need many restarts and we need many small and big restarts in all kinds of industries. These seven paths can provide some inspiration and some guidance for companies of different size and in different sectors on how to do this in practice.